Great. All right, so after the bear field dressing video we had up on YouTube, everyone's been asking for uh, a new skin bear. So we brought this one down to the expert. <laughs> okay. I, do, I, do a little, I do a few bears a year. So. What do you think you do a year? Well, I do probably 12 that go to market for sure. Yeah, so, and we're going to skin this one out for fur processing. This isn't for taxidermy. Well, it could be if you want to rub it, but not for uh, a full body man. We would case skin it if you want a full body, so we're going to open uh, skin it. This would be for a rub as well. So, first thing we're going to do, we're just going to make our initial cuts. We haven't taken the guts out of it yet. Shannon has a cut fire from here, so uh, we like them to come in nice and clean. It's a lot easier if you don't feel dress them, but if you can't be to your butcher in time, Get it cut, you should cut them in the woods just to get the heat out of them. So we're going to make a few cuts. We're going to do one up the, the middle. We'll make our leg cuts and leg cuts up here. So anyone doing any leg cuts, you want to start. A lot of guys will make a mistake. They go on the inside of the paws and that. You don't want to do that. You just want to come under the paw and come down the elbow and out to the, the chest. And it doesn't matter where you come out here, as long as they're both even, that helps the taxidermist. And for the bottom cut, right in the back of the pad, straight across, you can go right through the hoo-hoo if you want, and right up to the other pad. And then uh, those will be our initial cuts and we'll skin it over there. Did you really just call it a hoo-hoo? It's a hoo-hoo. <laughs> <laughs> so if it wasn't almost 30 degrees Celsius out tonight, we could have just done this at home, but tonight it be just warm. It's really warm. So like Mark said, we want to get it done right away, get the heat of it. So this one's a bore, so with, the, with the, the package you just want to go right up the side of it and when you skin out, um, that'll all just come right off with the hide and we'll clean that up after. And for the neck, uh, the, if you're going to do taxidermy, the further down you stay is better. That helps them do a, a case skin on it and uh, to put their mounts in the heads. If you're not doing taxidermy, it's just going for fur, you can go right up to the throat. If it's going for a rug, you can throw it too in. You can if you're going to open it, but if you're going to get the head mounted, you want as much fur up there for the taxidermy to work with. And then I'll show you a paw here real quick. So the paws, so in uh, North America, uh, our auction houses, well we're down to one now, is in uh, Ontario, and you can't have a bear hide in Ontario without complete claws. If he's missing one toe, he cannot go into Ontario. That, that's just the law. That's for poaching reasons. Yeah. So you have to leave the claws on the hide um, well, both for taxidermy and for the market. So what you want to do, uh, you just want to, you can take this pad off either way you want to, and the easiest way is just to get your knife in underneath it like that, and then just turn it up like this, and then you can skin it down. And most guys, if they're taking this to the taxidermy, so they would just leave that paw off. In. And we're going to leave it in yeah. for now. We, we'll take it out later too. Um, but and then that exposes your joint right here, where we're going to just cut that paw off. So and that's it. That it just by swapping that. If you don't want to, if you you can still get at that joint yeah. without taking this back. This just gives you some space. Yeah. And and then you yeah, can, that's different because I usually I just went down through, but it gives you a lot more room in there. To yeah, and then you can joint. it can work a little easier. <laughs> yeah, and here, this I'm just showing you here for this bear, like, uh, you know, 
if we were real serious tonight, we would have brushed them out first because this is what happens. You get this dirt will transfer onto the meat and then we'll hose that off, but I don't like dirt contamination on the bear. He's gonna have a lot of his back. He sees it around a little bear. You can make that fat into soap and lip balm and beard oil. You don't have to put much pressure on it. It, it. It's just basically you're just moving fat. And if you get too close, that was close there. What'll happen is you'll get what's called a false cut. It doesn't go through the hide, um, but taxidermy, it creates a, like right there, that, I just did one. That'll create like a thin spot in the hide. You won't get really penalized for it unless it's really bad, but you just want to kind of angle your knife so it just kind of takes it off. And we'll scrape all that fat off later. Slow down. I know it's close right up, but we don't like that. Snap that over the joint. You want to try and leave that little Achilles tendon intact because that's what makes it easier for hanging. Yeah, because if that's not there, yeah, then we got to jam it into the meat and it can tear. And a lot of people make that mistake. They'll cut that Achilles right there. You see that tendon? And that's a good spot for the hook to go through. And it just comes in the back end of that leg. Yep. Yeah, you did. No more kids. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that was an option. <laughs> he said no more kids. <laughs> I think it's kind of late for that.
I don't think I've ever heard Mark so quiet in his life. <laughs> I just checked that out of Paul, and what you want to do is, um, it doesn't matter which side of that pad you go up, but I just like to keep them symmetrical. If I go up this side, I have to do the inside on that one, if I do the outside, I'll do the outside on the other one. That's just for appearance. So you'll flush the paws and the head out when you do the uh, five, and you flush it all out? Yeah, we'll take them out. Well, we'll take the head out tonight. That'll come, we'll case in the head and yeah. get it up. And, uh, Put the paws, I'll sit down and I'll take these out uh, this winter when I'm working on the hides. You just freeze on your hides and then pick away at them in the winter? Yeah, I don't do them now because of flies. Yeah. So I just wait until it gets cold and then I'll start doing one a week just to keep my. keep, keep in shape. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take you to flush your hair? Uh, like the one like this would be probably 45 minutes to an hour. A big one, uh, you know, could be up to two hours. It'll, it, but it all depends on what kind of bear it is too. Like the reason I say the one like this is because this one's really fatty. Yeah. And it should push off really nice. I find the old boars, they, they get like their skins almost attached to them, almost leathery.
front of the sun here, Sally. So, another thing, see how much dirt's on that bear? I'm gonna wash my hands. But another thing is, and this will make the taxidermy happy, the less fat you leave on the hide, the more on the, the carcass, the better. Um, we're gonna take this fat off afterwards for Sally to make her soaps and stuff. Uh, we don't want to leave it on the hide because we can't get it off after we've scun it and uh, it'll go to waste after that. Roll this bear skin up, throw it in a garbage bag, and throw it in the freezer, it won't freeze. There's too much insulation, and bacteria will set in, and you'll come uh, to do it later, and you'll get uh, hair slippage in your fur. So you'd be really disappointed if that happened um, for a, a rug mount or something. So again, you try to get as much of that fat off, leave it up here, not on the hook. The taxidermy said that happens a lot. Yeah, they're going to roll it in, and then put it in. Just too much fat, and it might be. You know, five, six days before it, before it freezes because of that much fat. Take a See right here? 
That is, uh, what's that one called? No, the, the, uh, it's that artery. Oh, the curve. Yeah, if you hit that sucker, it's gonna get messy here in a, in a hurry. There's one on this side as well, so don't hit them. You can see it's full of blood. Yeah, is the gas <laughs> still in it? Yeah. It's so bloody. Yeah. What I'll do is I'll pull it out and lay it on the, on the back. Almost past it. So much pressure on that. Okay, you see the weight pulling it down. So we're on to the ears here now. So these are the ears. When you get to the ears, for a taxidermist, I'll trim these out later as well, but for a taxidermist, you want to leave mints, you just cut across the ear like that. It gives you a nice little finger hole. I'll pull down a little bit. That's it. Just keep going. eyelid there so you just kind of go in behind it and when you get to the other side of the eye you just turn it seal it off and there it's free sometimes guys will will uh, I'll do a clean one here they'll, they'll, they'll cut that bottom part of the eye right there and we call it big eye in. and what happens is the eyeball will open up and then it's just again more work for the taxidermist well, they, they take off when you send that to, for the fur auction stuff too, that was done? Nope, not for the fur auction. Because they're going to fix it, right? It, but that's what your value is probably going to be. Like, if your eyes, if you've got a taxidermist that's buying the, the fur, the, he'll be looking at the eyes and the ears and everything, right? But probably 90% of the bears at the auction go for fur. Yeah, the Queen Terrace. Yeah, that's just an arrangement they do have with Canada, and that is all Canadian black bears. Those hats are made. It's probably the majority of the I think they might have used to have been bison in the day. Just the last little tip. When you get down this far, a lot of the times the bear will bite onto his hide and rigor mortis sets in. So there, I just pulled it out. You just gotta be careful, if you get going too quick, you can cut his lip off by accident. Just blow them up now and uh, get them frozen. <laughs> 